Hey everyone, how's it going? For today's video, I'm proud to present an up close and personal, in depth look at the R34 Nissan Skyline GTR. And this is going to be a detailed, in depth review of the GTR. We'll start it up, show the engine, get an exhaust clip, and go over the performance data, taking on a quick drive, and show you many of the unique aspects of both the interior as well as exterior. And before I begin, I'd like to extend a big thanks and special shout out to Cosmo Motors located in Hickory, North Carolina for providing the GTR featured in today's in-depth review. Now this car is not for sale, but provided through their private collection. For more information on their available inventory, please feel free to check out their website provided in the description box below. And so, without further ado, let's go ahead and start her up, let her run. This R34 is finished in bright Bayside blue, complemented by heavily bolstered monoform seats with grippy light gray cloth upholstery and red accent stitching. Offered primarily as a two-door and right-hand drive configuration, the Skyline GTR was never officially sold in the United States. A shame, really, as it represented some of the most advanced technology and top-shelf performance of its time. This example has been modified to combine the added abilities of the V-Spec. Despite the V-Spec 2 badge on the rear, the only V-Spec 2 component is the hood, and that model was not introduced till late 2000. As always, I'll be presenting the car as if it were stock, highlighting key differences throughout. The R34 GTR features rack and pinion steering with speed proportional power assistance. Revised a bit compared to the R33 to deliver more feedback to the driver, as well as easier overall control when cornering and added straight line stability. Like its predecessor, it also features Nissan's super high cast four wheel steering system, paired with the Atessa all wheel drive system and electronic torque split, in addition to an active limited slip differential with the V spec. It's all routed through a sporty three-spoke steering wheel with red double accent stitching with the GTR badge located in the middle. It also benefits from an all-new six-speed manual gearbox developed in collaboration between Nissan and Getrag. It replaced the five-speed manual of the R33 and offered a number of added benefits including improved gear synchronization, a more rigid gear lever, shorter throws, smoother operation and enhanced power delivery. Despite having an extra gear tacked on, which is essentially an overdrive gear, the transmission weighs 6.6 .6 pounds less than the previous 5-speed. Overdrive is meant for quiet cruising while providing up to a 10% improvement in fuel consumption. A 4-speed automatic was available with other Skylines, including the GT Turbo, featuring manual shifting ability via the gear lever or by a set of steering wheel toggle controls. This GTR also features one of two available Nismo instrument clusters, either this white one or there's a black one also available. They increase the maximum RPM as well as top speed readout. V-Spec specific instrument clusters also, like you see here, will have the compressed tack range between 0 and 3000 RPM. So, let's go ahead and flip on the Xenon headlamps, rear fog lamps, as well as the hazards. driver's side window is fully automatic. 
we'll go ahead and check out the exterior. At its introduction, the GTR or Gran Turismo racer represented the pinnacle of performance for Nissan Motorsports, still doing so to this day. Ever since the GTR name was first applied to the skyline in 1969, a legend in Japanese and international car culture was born due to its illustrious racing pedigree. Available only in Japan and select export markets, the GTR was Nissan's flagship of technology and innovation. Its potent performance and top shelf engineering led it to often being compared to higher priced exotics and the best grand tours from Europe. Nissan then decided to introduce an all new third generation GTR, 16 years after the discontinuation of the second gen in 1973. The all new GTR, commonly known as the R32, is based on the eighth generation Skyline. That car would set the stage for one of the best performing GT cars of the 90s with two additional generations to follow. The third generation R32 would be produced from 1989 through 1994, the 4th gen R33 from 1995 through 1998, and the 5th gen R34 from 1999 through 2002. The Skyline is available in both 2 and 4 door configurations while the GTR can only be had as a 2 door, aside from some very rare 4 door special editions in the mid 90s. The GTR received the largest displacing engine of the Skyline's new inline six cylinder lineup and featured twin parallel turbochargers. The GTR's 2.6 liter RB26 DETT packed the biggest punch and at one point was even unbeatable in the race circuit, earning the R32 the famous nickname Godzilla. In fact, one of its claims to fame was winning all 29 races of the 1990 Japanese Touring Car Championship, of course, among many others. RB refers to the race bred engine series, 26 refers to the 2.6 liters of displacement, D refers to dual overhead cam, E refers to electronic fuel injection, and TT of course refers to twin turbo. While never offered for sale in North America, the Skyline fits right into the 90s JDM sports car craze popularized by Nissan's own 300ZX, Acura's NSX, Toyota Supra, Mitsubishi's 3000 GT, and so much more. The R34 Skyline GTR was originally launched at the beginning of the 1999 model year. In addition to creating a far more engaging and refined driver's car, Nissan pretty much took the GTR back to its iconic R32 roots in terms of agility and overall responsiveness, while maintaining some of the most advanced engineering tactics for its day. It might as well be the ultimate GTR of the 90s in terms of size, power, technology, aerodynamics, and overall capabilities. To set things off, the R34 benefited from a more aggressive styling treatment than its predecessor. The front fascia is upright and bold. It announces its presence in a big way, far more threatening than your run-of-the-mill skyline. Compared to the R33, front-end overhang was reduced by 0.8 inches. The hood is dominated by a tapered bulge that meets with the corners of the upper grille. On the GTR and GTR V-Spec, the hood and fenders were made from aluminum. A new R34 exclusive design shaved 2.2 pounds when compared to the R33's hood. This GTR was upgraded with the V-Spec 2 hood, which is made entirely out of carbon fiber for an additional 8.8 .8 pounds of weight reduction. The V-Spec 2 did not debut to the second half of the 2000 model year, contrary to the badge seen on the back of this example, bringing with it numerous exterior and interior enhancements that set it apart, and I'll point those out as we go along. An integrated NACA duct not found on the aluminum hood is offset to the driver's side and directs more cool air into the engine compartment. The duct itself is typically left in exposed carbon fiber. A redesigned front fascia features a larger air dam to direct large volumes of air to the intercooler, radiator, oil cooler, and brakes while increasing aerodynamic efficiency. Seen here is an available Nismo Aero Kit which includes a more aggressive and purposeful front fascia. The lower clip incorporates a subtle black diffuser, connected to a fiberglass underbody tray that extends just past the front wheels. The diffuser setup is typically found on the V-Spec and works to reduce air resistance and lift. The fascia also incorporates additional wing-like vents just ahead of the wheels. Air is able to pass through and exit more effectively while eliminating the buildup of hot air from under the sculpted wheel arches and oil cooler, helping create negative pressure zones and adding downforce while yielding more efficient brake cooling. Honestly, even in its stock form, it's hard to find an element of the R34 that doesn't look like it was purposely designed to look angry, especially the blacked out Xenon headlamps. Later GTRs received clear front and side marker lights. The flared fenders made the car look wide and muscular, seamlessly flowing down to meet with the integrated side sills. 
To match the lower front clip, the additional Nismo aero components across the sides and rear flanks visually lower the car and help optimize airflow and keep the look uniform. Overall, the R34 weighs just a bit more than an R33, but it's actually a smaller car, with reductions in overall length and wheelbase by 2.9 and 2.2 inches respectively. The GTR's factory body kit made it nearly 0.8 inches longer than a typical Skyline two-door. At the rear wheel arches, the R34 is a little bit wider by a mere two-tenths of an inch. Therefore, the R34 slots in between the R32 and R33 in terms of size. Keeping the R32's agility in mind, the newest GTR would be designed from the get-go to be more responsive and take further advantage of its handling capabilities. Body shell stiffness was increased by 56%, while torsional rigidity doubled compared to the R33. At the rear, the Skyline's signature circular tail lamps are recessed into the body and give it an unmistakable identity. An aluminum alloy two-stage spoiler mounted on the trunk offers adjustments ranging from 10 to 30 degrees, allowing you to alter the level of rear end downforce. As we briefly touched on earlier, the GTR V-Spec benefited from front and rear underbody diffusers. This example has not been fitted with the rear component. If equipped, the rear diffuser would be made of carbon fiber, creating a notable level of additional downforce, especially when combined to the base GTR's diffuser. The carbon fiber panel even works to divert a portion of air to cool the car's differential through an additional NACA duct. Of course, this GTR features a far less restrictive aftermarket exhaust, but the factory exhaust actually had dual tips. One incorporated a pressure-activated bypass valve for quieter operation and normal driving. A Tessa ETS refers to the GTR's all-wheel drive system, revised slightly for the R34 to yield a few key performance advantages. The system employs speed sensors at each wheel along with two centrally located lateral G sensors, a throttle opening sensor, and even a brake light switch to measure both lateral and longitudinal forces, traction stability, and even help predict the driver's intent up to 100 times per second. All of that data is then passed to a 16-bit central processor which gives the commands to distribute a portion of available torque to the front wheels, via two wet multi-plate clutches through an electronic torque split or ETS converter. GTR is equipped with the V-Spec or Victory Spec configuration had a further revised setup known as Itessa ETS Pro, tuned for faster reactivity and reduced oversteer thanks to recalibrated ECU settings. The Pro's added ability comes from an active limited slip differential, which can then distribute torque between the rear wheels, whichever had the most traction to maximize the GTR's cornering potential. Each wheel benefits from a dedicated multiplate clutch for infinite variability of the torque, all controlled by the central computer. The magic of the system is that the GTR primarily acts in rear wheel drive. If needed, it can send up to 50% of the available torque to the front. V-Spec cars get an even stiffer suspension as well as a 10 to 15 mm drop in ride height compared to a standard GTR. What also made the GTR unique like the 300ZX Twin Turbo was an innovative four-wheel steering system known as HiCast, or High Capacity Actively Controlled Steering. It allows the rear wheels to steer counterphase or opposite to the front wheels, up to 0.5 degrees or so in either direction to point the car more into a curve, thus improving turn in and reducing excessive understeer. When the rear wheels are returning in phase through a curve, a slip angle is developed as they gain more traction, helping launch the car out of an apex. When HiCast was implemented in the R32 GTR, it worked through hydraulics that ran off the power steering pump and took inputs from speed sensors to determine how much the rear wheels would turn to complement the front. With the R33, a revised system known as Super HiCast would feature an electronic actuator mounted on the steering rack rather than hydraulics. It also improved handling by measuring front and rear yaw rates. The new setup helped decrease weight, in addition to adding a dedicated computer control module that supplied inputs rather than the earlier speed sensors. Super HiCast continued largely unchanged for the R34. The R34 GTR originally featured a set of 18 by 9 inch 6 spoke forged aluminum wheels, wrapped in bespoke high performance 245 40 Bridgestone Potenza tires, able to hold around 0.9 g of lateral acceleration. The new wheel design also shed quite a bit of weight compared to the set found in the R33. As far as the brakes, internally ventilated and slotted Brembo discs can be found at each corner. The front discs measure in at 12.8 inches paired with 4 piston calipers. The rear features 11.8 inch discs with 2 piston calipers. Updated 4 channel ABS came standard. With this setup, a stock GTR is said to be able to stop at about 125 feet from 60 miles an hour. 
Brake cooling was further assisted by the stock wheels open spoke design, in addition to the cooling ducts in the front air dam. The latest GTR, like its predecessor, features a fully independent front and rear multi-link suspension. Implementing the new lighter weight one-piece forged wheels and aluminum lower suspension arms further reduce front end unsprung weight for the R34. The suspension arms alone shave 5.5 pounds each. Retuning of the suspension geometry in addition to improving chassis attachment led to significant improvements in rigidity in order to deliver greater overall feedback and cope with the R34's wider tire package. Revised dampers are said to improve low-speed suspension harshness over rough surfaces, leading to greater occupant comfort. Stiffer bushings in the rear suspension add more camber rigidity and grip, while updated anti-roll bars help improve roll stiffness. The RB26 turbocharged and intercooled 2.6-liter inline six-cylinder continues for the R34, with quite a few updates to enhance torque and overall response. It features an iron block with aluminum heads, dual overhead cams, four valves per cylinder, sequential multi-port fuel injection, sodium-filled exhaust valves, and an 8.5 to 1 compression ratio. Maximum engine speed is 8,000 RPM. It's unique in the fact that it features six individual throttle bodies rather than a single unit as well as the parallel configuration of the R34's Garrett ceramic turbochargers. The new design also reduces rotor friction by 50% due to the addition of twin ball bearings in the turbines. They're organized in a way that the first turbo is paired to the front three cylinders while the second is paired with the rear three cylinders. The R34 received a red engine cover with plastic timing belt cover versus the R33's metal design, in addition to N1-spec lightweight connecting rods, modified camshafts, and other more subtle changes like a lighter weight turbo outlet tube to yield faster engine response and a better torque curve. It also ran quieter in its stock form compared to earlier iterations. A new stainless steel exhaust outlet reduced back pressure. With the new turbochargers came an increase in boost pressure, now 13.5 psi or .93 bar, compared to the R33's 12.2 psi or .84 bar. A new, larger air-cooled intercooler reduces weight by 6.2 pounds and reduces airflow resistance for greater turbo efficiency. This translates to a factory claimed 276 horsepower or 280 PS at 6800 RPM and 289 pound-feet of torque at 4400 RPM. Horsepower remains the same as the R33, with the R34 gaining 18 additional pound-feet of torque. It was also commonly known that the RB26 actually produced between 300 and 325 horsepower, but it was rated at 280 due to an agreement between various JDM manufacturers to limit the horsepower that would be advertised to the public. Stock performance data included 0 to 62 miles an hour in 5.2 seconds and a limited top speed of 155 miles an hour. Quarter miles should be similar to its predecessor, which ran a 13.6 second at 102 miles an hour, perhaps maybe even a bit quicker with the added torque. With brief overboots, times decreased to as low as 4.7 seconds to 60 in the quarter mile in 12.8 seconds. The design was originally to use a smaller displacement engine for Group A racing, but with the addition of the all-wheel drive system and the weight it added, it led to the use of the larger displacement RB variant that would last through the R34 generation before discontinuation. With a 17-gallon tank, the GTR required premium gas and achieved an average fuel economy rating of 19 miles to a gallon. The GTR's interior, like many Nissan products of the era, featured pretty good build quality and ergonomics. It was by no means a luxury car, coming standard with just your basic amenities, but it really catered to the performance enthusiast. Earlier GTRs, like this example, featured the light gray cloth upholstery as standard on the seats and door inserts, in addition to red accent stitching and a light gold-colored center console treatment. As we talked about before, when the V-Spec 2 came out in the second half of the 2000 model year, it brought darker upholstery with white accent stitching and darker center console trim, which also shows that this particular example, despite the rear badge, is not a genuine V-Spec 2. The doors are covered in a bit of soft touch material, and on the driver's door it incorporates your power windows, power locks, and mirrors in addition to a little bit of storage. Depending on the market, the GTR's equipment packages could differ a little bit. For example, I know the UK cars, or at least the press releases, stated that the cars came standard with Connolly leather seats and heated front seats to add a little bit of a luxury touch. But even in the standard cloth forms, they're extremely comfortable and also nicely detailed with the grippy portions across the outer edges and the red color accent stitching. 
They're also extremely comfortable and supportive, as if you expected anything else. They're heavily bolstered up top and down below, especially the flared backrest, which really cradles your shoulders quite well. The integrated headrest actually has built-in ports for a racing harness. The manual adjustments are really quite easy. You have a knob on the right-hand side that controls the backrest, and a simple lever up front for a forward and aft adjustment. Climbing into the back seat is also relatively easy, and I'll show that a little later in the video. Aluminum GTR scuff plates greet the entry guard, and you have drilled aluminum sport pedals with a dead pedal off to the far left. The lower portion of the dash has a small storage compartment, as well as adjustable height for the headlamps. The steering wheel is manual tilting, and overall the dash is a very clean and simple design. Everything is kind of tilted towards the driver as well, keeping everything nice and focused. Finished off with black pillars and a gray headliner. So let's go ahead and see if she sounds. Yeah. <laughs> 
One of the coolest pieces of tech in the R34 is a 5.8 inch multifunction LCD display. Similar in concept to the system found in the 2009 and newer GTR, the MFD shows up to 7 essential engine statistics, adding a bit of excitement through new age innovation for the time. The base GTR system has five readouts including boost pressure, accelerator position percentage, injector output, oil temperature, and water temperature. The readout for boost pressure in this system is limited to 1.2 bar or 17.4 psi. Typically on V-Spec cars you receive an upgraded system that has two extra features that we show at the bottom, intake and exhaust gas temperatures. This example doesn't have either of those statistics although it does feature the optional Nismo MFD. The Nismo system includes the aforementioned and statistics but adds a lap timer, oil pressure gauge to replace accelerator position, g-force meter as well as an increase in boost pressure management up to 2 bar or 29 psi. The system can even record performance data that you can then download to a laptop. Within the boost pressure screen, it records peaks for the past 30 seconds for quick viewing. You might even notice some white lines show up in some of the digital analog gauges. Those also record peak data which can be reset by a push of the joystick to the right. All in all, there's four main buttons across the bottom. Display, Return, Menu, and Mode. Between menu and mode, you can basically go through the different system functions as well as customize a few of the various screens. You can even program a shift light through an LED indicator in the top right hand corner of the unit. The red zone screen incorporates programmable warning indicators when things reach certain temperatures or levels. The lap timer screen is another pretty cool setup where really the data logging comes more into play that you can download and compare at a later time. The display function off to the far left is where you can control well the display or even turn it off altogether. You'll also notice a TV button in the top right. Nissan did make some radios with TV tuners so you can watch your programs in the car. Of course, for safety, only the audio would play while driving, but when the speeds fall below 5 km per hour, the picture would then reappear. Below the center air vents is your simple electronic automatic climate control with your fan speed, temperature off to the far right, one touch automatic, recycling, and front and rear defrost, in addition to your digital clock setting. Right beneath that is a spot for a double din radio, of course this one has an aftermarket unit. Like we said, the earlier GTRs had a lighter colored center console treatment. You have an ashtray, lighter and power outlet up front, two cup holders, as well as a soft padded armrest featuring the red color accent stitching with a modest amount of space. Your lighting and turn signals off to the right, and intermittent wipers to the left. I never really know what's going on. Look at me sometimes, like all you want to do is run. Shut her down. And we'll check out the rest of the vehicle. The passenger seat features the same manual adjustments that you find in the driver's seat.
Down below, you do have a locking glove box with a modest amount of space. The Skyline GTR was immensely famous in international racing, but unfortunately was never exposed to a large worldwide market. So seeing one today is a very rare and exclusive treat, especially in the United States. The engineering and technology behind it is something to truly appreciate. Thanks to its immense performance and modification capabilities with superior handling and traction, it's no wonder why the GTR became such a widely known icon. Well everyone, I hope you enjoyed the in-depth look at this 2001 Nissan Skyline GTR. Be sure to stay tuned next time. There's a lot more where that came from. Take care, everybody.